about sounds and phonetics. Hey, I'm Kille, Kayla Begay Foliet, Talk a Mistamis, Hontah Nakao Nahua E, Sant Natinu Suf Dai Netten, Sung Satan Ding, Suf Dai Netten, Hayahe, Dahwalas Ding, Suf Dai. My name is Kayla Begay. I come from the Acorn Stirring Place in the Hoopa Valley. Uh, I grew up and lived in Hoopa and lived in the Bay Area for a time. We have a word for that, Sung Satan Ding. Somebody stole a dress and brought it back down here, or brought it down here. There's apparently a story for that. And now I live um, in Eureka, Dahwalaus Ding, where it floats on top. If anybody knows about Tulawat, the Wiat Island there, um, that's our, our name for it. It comes from um, probably the Wiat, just transferring over that it's floating on top. Uh, today I'm going to go ahead and talk about phonetics. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make this as interactive as possible. I'm also um, cognizant that we've all been eating. <laughs> and it's going to involve muscles in our mouth. So uh, apologies in advance if there's a splash zone. <laughs> or if we need to you know, wet our mouths with, with drinks. Um, we're going to go ahead and go through this uh, phonetics today. So I teach in Native American studies at Humboldt State University, and I get the privilege of teaching a lot of different students from all over California, Native students. One of the classes I taught recently, um, NAS 340, Language and Communication in Native Communities, uh, 20 of the 24 students were Native California students. And the funny thing was, um, the only three or four that were non-Indian, uh, usually it's the case that when Indians are outnumbered, we kind of band together. <laughs> well, in that class, they all grouped together. <laughs> and we all got to talk about languages of California. And the, uh, there was one Navajo, one Diné. So the agenda for today, what is phonetics? What is phonology? Um, this is something that I would teach in my class at the beginning, um, talking about sound systems and the sounds that are possible in our languages, and how phonetics and phonology how they're useful, the study of these things. What writing systems are used? We're going to go ahead and go over uh, one that's probably the most common. I'm going to use some symbols from it, but the main important thing that I want you to take away from today is more hearing the sounds. Um, some of us are beginners, some of us are more advanced, and I just want to be mindful of that as well. And we're going to go ahead and talk about um, what types of symbols are used for those sounds. And then what are those sounds here in California? Uh, California is often talked about as a linguistic area. There's things that as California native people that we share and one of the things that linguistics um, linguists look at if we're looking at California aerial linguistics is um, if there's patterns to the sounds here shared among us. We're in conversation with the land but also with each other and there's things that we share um, in particular culture areas, and also I would have to say with, um, we have some organ people here, right? <laughs> we weren't just, those, those boundaries weren't there. We also have people from Baja, a little, uh, the language goes into Baja, right? And so that would be Kumyai. So just keep in mind that um, when we say California, we're, there's, that wasn't so back in the day. And so um, how might we understand those sounds? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. And so what is phonetics? If you uh, do a quick Google search, this is the definition that's given. The study and classification of speech sounds. And so you know, you see here the words broken up. <laughs> phonetics, it's got a phonetic spelling underneath it, right? Uh, English is a very interesting language in that there's a lot of different symbols for the same sounds, there's a lot of different sounds, or there's a, to take one sound, there can be a lot of different symbols for that one sound, right? That's why it's so hard to learn how to read. <laughs> because most of the time, the way we speak, we have to learn all of the um, sort of different ways those match up with symbols. And most of the time, when we go to school, um, what we speak doesn't match up with what the spelling is always in English. So we have to work on that everyone does um, to learn that system. 
And so what is phonetics? Uh, well, first of all, a branch of linguistics that focuses on the production and classification of the world speech sounds. I'm gonna kind of limit um, discussion today to California, again, broad terms, California. Um, but it is a study, and so if someone who studies phonetics is a phonetician, and so they'll break down the words uh, according to the sounds, and you can, they can chart it, and they can see um, what exactly is happening with your mouth and what the different um, parts are. Because sounds can be described and sorted into categories based on how they're made and what speech organs are used. And so, um, obviously, we use our mouths, right? <laughs> what else? Ears? Our nose. Our nose. Tongue. Tongue, right? Tongue is a big one because most of, um, well, how do I say this? A lot of different languages will refer to um, the language as the tongue. The, it could be the same uh, meaning as the word tongue. There might be other sort of metaphors for our language that have to do with that, maybe our breath. There might be other examples people can provide. But how we make these sounds are very much tied into also how we conceive of language itself and our languages. And then finally, just um, if you know something about phonetics, it can be easier to learn to make the sounds required in another language. And so if you know something about how sounds can be produced, what parts are used, it can be easier to learn another language with another set of sounds, or some of the same sounds, or slightly different. A little bit about phonology, because we see this um, in our grammars, we see this referred to in linguistics. It's related to phonetics, only you're taking the sounds and you're looking at how they pattern in a language or across languages, um, how those sounds um, might be grouped together and thought of as the same sound in our minds. It's not a given that uh, for instance, a sound in, in one language is distinct in another. We experience that when we're learning, right? Because uh, what might be considered the same sound in, in, in English might be completely different in our, in our languages. There might be different versions of the same sound. I can talk a little bit more about that. There's also regular patterns within and across languages that can help make sense of how sounds appear or behave in certain environments. And so you might get a sense for that uh, when I give some examples later. And a little bit about writing systems. Uh, so there's several different types that I would like to go ahead and talk about. Linguistic writing systems, first, um, are meant to encode one symbol, one sound, and two that are used quite a bit would be International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA. Who's heard of IPA before? Awesome, cool, okay. Uh, but that's completely useful in, in learning phonetics, um, and it encompasses world sounds. Uh, but most of our documentation is actually not in IPA, right? And so what we actually have for most of the documentation, um, I think that is represented in, by the um, folks in this room that work with it, uh, Americanist system. So what I have here is a handout from a particular book that I'll go ahead and, and show later that is from this book, um, California Indian Languages by Victor Gola, that includes all the sounds of California, again, broadly defined. There's also practical orthographies or writing systems. Orthography is just another word for writing system. They're community-based and often help bridge the gap between English literacy and um, linguistic writing systems and the, the language sounds. And so it, some of us come from a tradition um, several decades now in which there's a, there's a practical orthography, there's a community orthography that sort of bridges maybe one of these linguistic systems with what we know and are able to read in English, and then also just what's the meaningful sounds in our languages. Unfortunately, there's some other categories <laughs> that sometimes our languages were documented by non-specialists who use their own system. And so 
maybe uh, they weren't necessarily trained in hearing all the sounds. There might be documentation that you have to work from and reconstruct what the meaningful sounds are. Um, that's certainly true in Wailaki, one of the languages that I work with. Some of the documentation was uh, done by uh, anthropologists who weren't necessarily trained in all the different sounds, weren't necessarily linguists. Linguists, um, Linguistics comes out of anthropology, but it's a distinct field. And so oftentimes when we use that, we have to go back and say, was that linguist, or not necessarily linguist, but that um, person who was writing that down, did they hear it, all the distinct sounds? Sometimes you have to uh, work with it to, f to figure out what's actually said. Okay, so what sounds are there in California languages? What I wanna go ahead and do is